Hi, and welcome to the Protect Your Bees from Mites PowerPoint, provided by the Honey Bee Health Coalition. My name is Mark Dykes. I am the president of the Apiary Inspectors of America, and I'll be your host today. Honey bees are an essential part of North American agriculture, but they face serious challenges today. Decline in honey bee health have been linked to various factors. One of the major factors facing honey bees is the Varroa mite. Let's watch this short public service announcement. Honeybees suffer from a parasite that is their most devastating pest, the Varroa mite. This mite is widespread and common. It spreads viruses and will kill most colonies within a year or two if nothing is done. This bee has been fed on by Varroa mites. She will never recover and will soon die. If you keep bees and do nothing to manage Varroa mites, your bees will die. Hi, I'm Danielle Downey, Executive Director of Project Apis M. And I'm Mark Dykes president of the Apiary Inspectors of America. Nearby colonies, even healthy ones, will likely be the next victims of these mites. Controlling varroa mites is part of being a responsible beekeeper. Don't let your bees, and then your neighbor's bees, suffer and die needlessly. There are many treatments to control varroa mites, including organic protocols. Consult the Honey Bee Health Coalition Tools for Varroa Management Guide and also these educational videos to learn to monitor and treat your bees for varroa mites. Who is the Honey Bee Health Coalition and what are they doing about colony health? The Honey Bee Health Coalition, or simply HBHC, is a diverse group of beekeepers, businesses, NGOs, and public private agencies focused on finding collaborative science-based solutions to improving the health of honeybees and other pollinators. The Honey Bee Health Coalition functions with task forces. One task force focuses on crop pest management, another on bee nutrition and forage. Our hive management task force has developed several resources to help beekeepers control varroa mites. The Tools for Varroa Management Guide offers specific information on varroa mites, sampling and monitoring of mites, and an integrated pest management approach to non-chemical as well as chemical varroa control options. The Tools for Varroa Management Guide is free to download. The Tools Guide includes a video series detailing how to use recommended sampling techniques and controls. Each video is about five minutes long, so they are very convenient to view. They are available on YouTube. You can find them by searching YouTube for Tools for Varroa Management Honey Bee Health Coalition. In addition, the Honey Bee Health Coalition has developed a sampling and control spreadsheet which provides a handy tool for beekeepers to track their varroa mite populations, their individual control strategies, and the effectiveness of the applied controls. Careful measurement and tracking are important to successfully implement integrated pest management. It is also free to download. The next section of this presentation is a series of question and answers. I encourage you to try to formulate an answer before I give it and see if you're right. We'll supply answers to several important questions about varroa. Drawing from the Tools for Varroa Management Guide might help you answer these questions. At each question prompt, say what you think the right answer is, and then we'll see if you're right. The first question is, what exactly is a Varroa mite? The Varroa mite is an eight-legged relative of the honeybee. It was originally on a honeybee that lives in Asia. It transferred and quickly adapted to our western honeybee when the two species were maintained within the same apiaries probably in the Philippines in the 1950s to 60s. It was transferred accidentally to Europe and South America and then entered the United States sometimes before 1987 when it was discovered in Wisconsin. These colonies had been moved from Florida. Within a few months it was discovered in additional 10 states and now is totally distributed in all 50 states. A strict and forced quarantine helped keep it from spreading into Canada but following discovery in New Brunswick in 1989, it is now widely spread there. It is, in fact, in all beekeeping areas of the world, except Australia, as of 2016, and lives on all bee races and selections, including the Africanized bee of the Americas. Living up to its scientific name of Varroa destructor, it causes premature aging of adults and a less efficient workforce and death of developing pupil brood. Feeding on host results in transmission of, and in some instances, an enhancement of pathogenic viruses and other bee diseases, which may subsequently reach epidemic proportions and kill the entire colony. 
True or false, every honeybee colony in the United States and Canada either has varroa mites today or will have them in several months. Unfortunately, this is a true answer. Mite populations left unchecked will grow rapidly. Colonies managed by beekeepers and those feral colonies existing in the wild are somehow found and infested by mites. Even if you have low mite levels today, your hives can be in danger in just a few months. Doing nothing about varroa mites is not a practical option for most beekeepers. The Tools for Varroa Management Guide from the Honey Bee Health Coalition will help you get to know varroa mites, determine numbers, and how best to manage them. Successful varroa control is... Successful varroa control solutions are proactive. It is critical to control varroa mites before the mites reach levels that threaten the colony productivity and survival, rather than respond after the damage has occurred. Integrated pest management combines regular sampling of mite levels with an array of control methods, and it is an approach recommended by the Honeybee Health Coalition. We will talk more about IPM later in this presentation. Both beekeeper and mite management are seasonal. What are the four primary interrelated population phases of both honeybee host and parasitic mites? Honeybees and their varroa parasitic mites cycle through four temporal phases. These phases are dormant, population increase, population peak, and population decrease. The relative length of each phase depends on location, such as Florida with long increases and decreases, or Manitoba with short rapid spring increases and rapid fall decreases. In some locations, there is more than one peak period per year. Do we know what number or percentage of mites is harmful to bees? The answer is yes. The number or percentage of mites that is considered potentially harmful depends on the seasonal phase. The percent is a measure of probability of significant risk to continued colony profitability and survival. It does not mean if you have a specific mite number that there is no risk. In peak population phase illustrated in red outline, there are lots of adult bees and lots of brood in fully developed colonies, but mite populations are still building. The danger level, colony loss is likely unless the beekeeper controls varroa mites immediately, is 5%. Although some consider 5% too high, we believe 3% a better upper limit. Levels above 5% mean an even higher risk. When sampling post-treatment, mite numbers should be less than 3%. If mite numbers remain above 3% following a treatment, you should consider applying another control chemical or method without delay. Why is sampling a critical part of integrated pest management approach to control of varroa mites? Integrated pest management relies on regular sampling of populations in order to determine accurately if the populations are increasing or decreasing. Implementing IPM means using a number of control techniques based on sampling numbers that seek to use cultural, physical mechanical means for prevention before using chemical controls. Biorational chemical controls, where available, may reduce potentially negative toxic effects and lessen the possibility of collateral damage to the environment or bee products and often are less hazardous to the applicator. Currently, we lack biological control efforts for varroa mites. Since colonies are likely to have mites, it is crucial to know with some accuracy the percentage mite numbers and whether the numbers are increasing or decreasing. What are the best methods to estimate mite populations? Removing mites from adult bees is the most accurate means of estimating percentage of mite infestation in a bee colony. The powdered sugar shake and alcohol soap watch method are two easy ways to do this. Details on how to use both these sampling methods are found in the Tools for Varroa Management Guide and on the sampling videos. Generally, a beekeeper should sample for mites at least four times per year. Continued sampling in population decrease phase is important. You should also sample after treatments to confirm the effectiveness of treatments. The photo on the top left is a sample of 300 bees with powdered sugar. The larger photo shows shaking off the excess sugar and mites onto a white surface where they're easily counted. The larger photo on the right shows an inexpensive double plastic cup with coarse cloth filter with rubbing alcohol used to separate the mites from the bees. See scientificbeekeeping.com for details on how to make your own sampler. 
The upper top right photo shows a double plastic jar with coarse wire cloth filter separating the two jars. 300 bees are placed into the jar along with alcohol which separates the mites from the bees. Then the shaker is inverted and the bees stay up to the top and the mites fall through the screen and are easily counted from the bottom. Next, let's ask another question. True or false, while mite densities may vary across colonies, all colonies in apiary should be treated at the same time with the same chemical or non-chemical technique. This question is a dilemma for many beekeepers. Do I have to treat all my colonies if only one has high mite numbers? The answer is true. While mite densities may vary across colonies, if sampling results indicate high mite populations in even one colony within an apiary, all colonies in the apiary should be treated at the same time with the same chemical or non-chemical technique. Strong colonies in population decrease phase may become mite bombs spreading mites rapidly across other healthy colonies. Those colonies with high mite loads that are collapsing can spread their mites up to two miles away via the adult bees abandoning their sick colonies. We call such colonies mite bombs, colonies ready to implode and spread mites to other colonies in the vicinity. So what controls work? Well, the tools for Varroa Management Guide and the videos cover all the approved, proven effective treatments and chemicals. No one approach or chemical will work for everyone in all situations. As new techniques or chemicals are developed, the tools guide will be updated. See pages 17 through 20 of the Tools for Varroa Management Guide for descriptions of each technique chemical and appropriate video that illustrates proper use and application. So in summary, the Varroa mite is a formidable foe. It is found in virtually all colonies in North America, if not now, soon. When mite populations grow and exceed an infestation level of about 3% of adult working bee population, it, often in association with viruses like deformed wing virus, shown in the upper right picture, weaken and kill bee colonies. Our ultimate solution for this serious pest is a bee that can better resist the mites themselves. Some stocks, such as hygienic bees, UMN hybrids, New World carniolans, and VSH are helpful, but until we have consistently resistant stock, temporary fixes such as management treatments, drone brood removal, and brood breaks, combined with a mixture of chemical approaches and an integrated pest management approach to varroa control is necessary. Keeping bee colonies healthy is challenging. Some seasons are going to be tough. Bee colonies will also need to be tough. The varroa mite is a formidable foe. It is difficult to control in some seasons. Unhealthy, stressed beehives will be more susceptible. Our ultimate solution will be to have bees better able to resist the mite. In the meantime, we search for effective means of control for the mite. The solution of some will not be appropriate for others. There is no single solution. As a great author once said, for every complex problem, there is an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. So how can you as a beekeeper help? Well, there is a citizen science project that's a collaboration of the University of Minnesota, University of Maryland, Michigan State University, and the Bee Inform Partnership that you can become a part of. This project will help you become more proficient in monitoring mites, can update beekeepers about mite levels in your area, and you can better understand mite population dynamics. You can find this project at www.mitecheck.com. This concludes our presentation on the Honeybee Health Coalition's Tools for Varroa Management. If you have questions, please refer to the guide or accompanying videos. The guide and videos can be found at www.honeybeehealthcoalition.org forward slash varroa.